All right. Yeah, so the welcome to the Sean Trey Show. I have a wonderful guest with me, Mr. Pasquale Esposito. Hi. Now, can you introduce yourself a little bit and tell uh, the guest a little bit about who you are? Yeah, this will be very fast because <laughs> uh, I, I can say that I'm working as an actor in the film industry. And I'm a father of two amazing kids, twins, a boy and a girl. And I have to tell you, they are teaching me to be a man. I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, I, I love that. I love that statement. Oh, gosh, because I'm not kidding. Oh, I, just, I, let, me, let me say something. Okay. Please do, please do. No, because it's really, I'm not kidding. That's the truth. Because I, I got my kid when I was 54. Oh, wow. And um, and up to that point, I thought, you know, I'm a man. I, you know, I did this and I did that. Yeah. Well, this is something very intimate, but I I, I had a breakdown because it, mm. it is like, you know, when they arrived, it is like you have a desk. If you can imagine to have a desk with a lot, lot of things and... Mm -hmm. Yep. And so I was some kind of uh, dying and then a kind of resurrection that I'm still working on. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is, this, is, this is my career resurgence because my wife is a famous singer, right? And when yeah. we had our daughter, there was this choice of like, who is going to do the parent, the majority mm -hmm. of the parenting so that the other one can work. And yeah. we made the decision that she would go back and get her career back first because my career, I could do film production from home. I can do, but you know, the, the truth was, is that for most of the time I've been a stay at home dad. I've also done my other projects, but I've been the, the, the one that's been handling a lot of our daughter's education. And, and she went mm -hmm. back, she started preschool two a year and a half ago, two years ago, but then COVID hit. And so it was, you know, and necessitated me doing this, this very hands-on thing for longer, which I don't mind. It's beautiful. But you touched on something that's so profound that I, I really, I don't think that I was a bad person before, but becoming a father and especially having this little daughter has made me want to be better, be a better man be a better person, be a better human being. And, and because it, you, you realize that like what, what, what I'm doing to affect the world right now is the world that she's going to be handed. Exactly. You know what I mean? And so I felt this, this, this responsibility to do something. And, and part of this podcast was, you know, one, I want to increase, let, let me be real. I'm going to be real about what I'm doing here. One, I want to spread inspiration. That is a main focus of what I'm doing. Two, I'm networking. I'm meeting new people. I'm getting to know people. I'm putting myself out there. I'm trying to be more visible for my own career. Let's be real. That is a thing that we have to do as professionals. Yeah. But the third thing, that's a really big thing for me. I, I wanted to leave something that some point in time in the future, maybe 40 years, 30 years, whenever, my daughter can sit down and watch these videos and go, wow, that's who my dad was. And and maybe some of it she'll judge me for. <laughs> Probably a lot of it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Oh, dad's weird, you know, whatever it is. But like, I hope that it could be something that she could look back on at some point in time and go, wow, I appreciate what he was trying to do. Because I and I think that if if you have kids and and they don't make you try to be better, you have to start asking questions of yourself. Why not? You have to start asking Seriously. that question. Seriously. Now, now you are a, a professional actor, and I've seen your acting. I love it. I watched the movie Framed, and that's how I met you. Was I, I got to watch Framed and uh, and I, in in that interview that I did, and uh, absolutely amazing amazing production and your your i loved the, the, your portrayal of this of this pol detective not a police officer detective yeah. now how how did you get into acting let's let's go back how did you start out as an actor well um i don't know what we'll, because i'd like to say something before that please do i'd love it wherever you want to yeah. go man i'm I'd here like for the ride say, 
<laughs> I'd like to say, Jean, that uh, I watched this video that you had with Nick, the director of the yeah, movie. Nick's, right? Nick's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I love him. I love him. And I don't know if, if you watched the documentary. I haven't seen the documentary. I have. Yes, yes, I have. I thought you meant like a making of. I have seen your documentary. I loved it. Okay. So because I told him, I said, listen, uh, because he was interested in, in the research that I'm doing that I'm going to talk later. Um, yes, I look forward um, to it. But then I said, okay, you know what? Let's do, let's have an agreement. You come with me. I have a symposium in, in uh, UK. I have a production in Munich. Uh, I have a workshop. Uh, you just come with me, shoot whatever you want to shoot, but you have to promise that you will edit and shoot in a way that you never did before. I love it. I love it. And he did it. You know, there was the, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in university, I studied um, history with an emphasis in philosophy. And my, my focus was on Zen Buddhism, actually, the, the Chinese version of it, Chan Buddhism, that was the, yeah. the idea of, of, and they would be the, the ones who originated the idea of the koan. And the, the essential practices of that philosophy was of just getting out of your head. No. Getting out of your preconceived ideas because they're the death of creativity. It's the death of like all things fun and spontaneous. And for me, my intuition is my, one of my core things. And I've had the best, the best experiences in my life are when I sat there and the universe told me to act and I did. And how? Mm -hmm. It just was a feeling. The night that I met my wife, mm -hmm. I was sitting at home. And I had this, this sudden urge to go. And I didn't know where. I just needed to move. And I knew that I needed to move. And I got on my motorcycle and I started driving. And I was driving up the street. And I was like, let's go this way and this way. And then all of a sudden I got to this spot. I got a drink and I texted my friend. I said, I need to text this person. I texted them and like, where are you? I was like, oh, that's like a block away. So I pulled up there. And I went to see my friend and I get into the building and I go upstairs and it's a recording studio. And he's like, I'm on the phone, wait for me. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> so I go and sit down in the recording studio and uh, he takes an hour and a half on his damn phone. It like, it like uh, right. and I was just like, do I stay or go? And then this, I heard this voice. I heard this voice singing. And I was like, whoa, where is that? So I went to the next, you know, uh, it wasn't this, it was like little, you know, sound booths in one studio. And I went and I looked and I saw this woman recording this beautiful song. And I was just blown away. And the only couch to wait was the couch that sat facing the room that she was singing in. Wow. And so for an hour and a half, I just sat there listening to this woman sing. And she smiled at me. I was smiling at her. And then she came out. And I was like, hi, hi. And then she left. She was gone. I didn't get her number. I didn't talk to her. That was my wife. And the next day, I was like, wow, that was just magical. I wish I would, I'd love to meet that girl again. She was just amazing. Not girl, that woman. Sorry. I don't want to objectify my wife like that. Um, and I finally, um, you know, my friend posted again about this woman and he's like so happy to be in the recording studio with V and I messaged her and I was like I don't know if you'd be open to this but I was the person sitting in the studio and I'd love to take you out for you know just to chat and hang out yeah. and she was like sure and she's like I never did this she thought I was weird I had the worst first date <laughs> <laughs> literally there was a there was a movie this one movie where this guy spills a drink on this girl and he's like, oh my goodness. And he starts trying to dry it and he puts his hand up his skirt. I did the same thing. And I was just like, oh my God. So I poured a drink all over my wife. And like, now she knows. At that time, I couldn't tell her, I have bad food allergies. So we went out to a place and I'm ordering water and a coconut water. And she's like, do you want a coffee? And I was like, not really. How about, you know, we're at an ice cream place. No, I'm okay with it. No, I don't want ice cream. I just, you know, we'll have a water. And she's like, this guy's so weird. But one night I said, hey, how about coming? And, you know, 
I can't go out tonight. My dog, I have a, my dog that I have at home and she's not feeling so well. I was like, would you like to come over and watch a movie? And she came to my house and met my dog and she's like, wow. And the, the second she's like, this guy's got these, this super sweet dog. And my dog was like my baby. You know, I had her with me for years. And even when I moved to Vietnam, I brought her with me because there was no way I was giving her away. No way that I would like let someone else care for her. That was my, she, we were, we were like together, you know? Yeah. But my point being, when you are rigid in, in Taoist philosophy, the Tao Te Ching, the, 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 the Lao Tzu, you know, the writer from, he says, that which is hard, uh, what, that which is fluid is life. That which is rigid is death. And I feel that if you are able to just go with the flow, magic, literal magic happens. That's yeah. my perspective. And so when I heard about this documentary that you were shooting and, I, and there was no, no script, no, no pre-production, just go and shoot it. I was like, that's, that's magical. There, there, was a, there was an the agreement because I said, I don't want money. I don't care. You know, you are, you have an interest. Come with me, but you have to follow a path that doesn't exist before you step with your feet. Nice. In any case, I want, I want to say something and then we enter. Uh, that I have to tell you, Sean, you inspired me so much. Thank you. Uh, but no, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want praises, but I want to know what part. What part inspired you? Because that yeah. that's interesting sure. to me. Absolutely. Uh, the way you welcomed Nick, the way you you ask questions. Let's say more precisely. The place from which you were talking inspired me so much. Metaphorically speaking, of course, because, <laughs> because the place where you were speaking, it's right there. But yeah. metaphorically speaking, you were listening and talking from a place that you inspired me so much so that now I'm thinking, you know what? I want to have a podcast. Do it, do it. <laughs> I think the more people that we get doing this, the better, because two things that I like about it. One, I feel that we, I have a, a painting on my wall that one of my favorite professors in university was a professor named Dr. Andrew Wheat. And I went to school at a conservative Christian university. And my, you know, upbringing and past was like that. And Dr. Wheat, taught world religions, he taught world philosophy, and he, he essentially just helped me expand my mind to a much less rigid level, to this place that I was, you know, more open to things. And how we did it half the time was reading great books and sitting around and having conversations till two and three in the morning. Now, I have this painting on my wall of these two men, and they're sitting and having tea, and it has a poem that I wrote. A crystal moon dances with the light. When the sun rises, it will all be done. Now drink and enjoy your tea. Yeah. And the idea is about simply being present in a conversation. We live in a world where we don't, we don't listen. Exactly. Well, believe it or not, it, it arrived everything to me. And, and I want to thank you so much, really, because you, you should try. inspired me. I'm thinking, you know, I'm somebody who want to, wants to die before the game is over. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and so I want to meet people like they have the same interests. And I can have a podcast, my gosh. I can yeah, right? invite people. <laughs> well, and I think it's so powerful because, yeah. like, you know, I've been I've been just deep diving on so I'll I'll how I find people sometimes is I'll go and I'll do a hashtag like filmmaking and then I start clicking on people film photography and I start clicking on people and seeing what they're and looking at their photos mm. and looking at their stories what are they posting about yeah. what are they making and, and you know everyone's so quick to badmouth social media but I think we're doing social media wrong 
I think that we're letting the computers tell us what to look at instead of saying, you know what, we can still control the system. We can still go out and create content that creates connectivities, that creates positivity, that creates a better search result. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it takes, there was a great quote from, um, I can't remember the writer, but it says, for good to triumph over evil. I think it's Kurt Vonnegut. For good to triumph over evil, it's possible. But the angels have to have the same level of organization as the mafia. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? You have to have that, that relentlessness, that hunger, that fire to go get it, you know? And I, and I think if I can, like, that's my, my tagline that I have on the bottom of every podcast, spreading inspiration. If I can light a fire that lights a fire for you, yeah. and then you can light a fire for other 20 other people, then suddenly we fight back with positivity, you know? We fight back with good stuff. Absolutely. I really, uh, it's, it's really... It's really, I really appreciate you, what you're doing. Well, let me ask you this question. Let's, let's, you're an actor. We're going to get back into that stuff. But if you could, I want to ask a question. Normally at the end of the interview, I ask this question. But I want to ask you at the beginning. If, if I gave you like the Aladdin's lamp, the genie lamp, you rub the lamp and you have three wishes, what would you wish for? Right? But to be free from myself, mm. to be free from even from the wish to be free. Hmm. Hmm. That's deep. And to love as much as I can. I like that. Which seems simple. All three <laughs> seem simple, but they're really hard. There was a there was a great story. I, I, I feel like we're getting back into Zen with these comments because, like, when we when, when one of the, the the Zen koan was the idea of a simple statement that would be the monks would say to someone, and then the person would have tried to understand that, you know. And, and one of the, the famous ones was like they would ask, "What is the Buddha? What is the Buddha?" And there was this one famous famous uh, Zen koan, this monk that answered with, look at the three-legged donkey running down the hill. So he asked the question was, what is the Buddha? And he says, look at the three-legged donkey running down the hill. And what was the point of that? People were like, what the heck does that mean? Well, it means be present in that moment. Whatever happens, be present in it. And if there's a three-legged donkey running down the hill, that is much more interesting to look at then whatever else you might think is important in that moment. As a father, I'm sure you'll have this understanding. Like, I held my daughter in my arms. I blinked, and now she's five. I blink again, and she's going to be ten. And throughout my day, when I'm trying to get work done and try to get stuff done, she calls, Daddy, 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 Daddy. And I'd have to make myself remember this morning I was editing one of my podcasts and I really wanted to get it up because I really wanted to be able to help influence people and get that good stuff out there. But I set up before I set up some homeschool activities and the homeschool activity today was sink or float. So I set up this, this aquarium, a small aquarium, and we, we got all these toys together to check to see with the, whether they sank or float. And so I was editing and I was doing my volume levels and I was like, okay, it's all set for you. Let's get the toys in and start putting them in then I'll be right there. And I was like, can you wait for me one minute? And I put on a video that introduced the concept of sink or float. It was an educational video. It was five minutes. She finished the video. I wasn't done with my, with my volume adjustments. I wasn't done with that. But she turned to me and said, daddy, can you come play with me? And I'm staring at that, that thing that I was fixing And I so wanted to get it right, to get it done, to finish what I thought was important. But she said, please, Daddy. And I turned and I saw this beautiful little face looking at me. And we walked over and we sat down and we started putting things in the water to see whether they sank or float. And she was so happy. And she hugged me and she said, thank you, Daddy. 
And I have to remember that even though I'm making something for her that she can look at in the future, I can't neglect the now. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and that's kind of the two sides. And, and I think that that's kind of one of the things as a father that's always popping in and that zen of being in the, the present moment. And so, yeah, how did you get into philosophy? And so, I, I love your... Do you want to talk more about your wishes or do you want to talk more about your philosophy? No, 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 no. I think, no, maybe I think... Uh, Where do you want to go? What do you want to talk to me about? It's well, you. that's the point, you know, because it's, it's... I don't want to go anywhere but from where... It, it goes, but like that. It, it, it looks like it looks. It looks like I have to go this direction. Like for example, um, acting. You know sure. why I, I, I'm doing acting and not selling bread or milk. Okay, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, I, I have such a. Uh, I think an uncommon interest for human behavior. I love that. Um, and, and just for you to know, I, I also, I, uh, I became counselor in reality therapy and I'm going to nice. start now um, hypnosis, but not because I okay. want to be the counselor. Of course, I don't care. I don't want to be there. I, I'm, I'm working as an actor. But I'm so interested in why we do what we do the way we do. I like that. And, 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 and so my interest, is, since I was a little kid, it was about how come something gets real? Where? And so I started to, to, to play acting. And then later, just later, I discovered that actual went so together with Zen because mm -hmm. uh, as an actor I want to be real I mean yes <laughs> you know and it's not just because later I, I, I'm gonna make the distinction it's not me to be real but the experience that is real but so I want to be real and then when I start to you know the the, the path of Zen, and I took the uh, the, the ordain. Um, well, think about it. my Zen master gave me something that it's called the Rakusu that you have to put, you know, like it's part of the dress, and yeah, yeah. just behind this kind of uh, shirt, he wrote something like the roots of illusion. And the roots of reality are the same. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a story that touches on that. Can mm -hmm. I share that? So when I first started in acting, I, I was getting, I didn't know what I was doing. I moved up to LA and I had no idea, no idea what I was doing. So I signed up for, I was doing some background jobs and like really started at the bottom. Like, you know, not real acting, but yet interesting because as a as a as a Zen a, a philosopher side of me, it was very interesting to dive into these things. So one day, I was on set, and I was cast as LAPD officer number two or whatever. That wasn't interesting. What was interesting was what happened. I was a little nervous. I drank a lot of water. We were filming on, on uh, Santa Monica Beach, just south of the pier, uh, of Santa Monica Pier. I drank a ton of water and I had to pee. And you know, we're suddenly, I'm wearing this cop outfit and I look at production and I was like, guys, how, how much longer till I'm on, man? You don't have any bathrooms nearby. Where are the nearest bathrooms? They're up on the pier. And I was like, I gotta go. I really gotta go. And they're like, dude, you go get back here quick because we might be ready for you. So I walk up the beach and, um, and I, I, I just had to go and I'm wearing, I'm dressed as an LAPD. So I walk up to the, you know, I'm, I'm walking up, I'm on the Santa Monica pier. I go into the bathroom and I'm, I'm getting back out. And in my mind, I'm an actor dressed as an LAPD and I need to get back to set. So I start jogging, yeah. jogging slash running. To the people watching me, 
I was an LAPD officer running down the beach. And cops don't run unless something's going on. So I get back to production. And and because I'm running, I don't want to drop the fake gun that they gave me. So my hand is here to keep the damn gun from falling out. I'm running up the beach holding the gun, you know, like this. And the idea is, is which one was real? Was I not? And to the people observing me, I was an LAPD officer running down the beach for some reason. They didn't know why, you know, and I'm holding a gun. To myself, I'm an actor running down the beach dressed in a costume that didn't mean anything to me, that had no emotional connection. Well, who was right? Yep. Both sides were right. You know what I mean? Both yeah. of these things. So the illusion and the truth were equally the same in that moment. It's simply about how they were being perceived. And what was very eye-opening for me was that other people's perceptions of us even if they're not true, are true. If we don't, um, uh, how do you say it? What we perceive is what we believe. And our perception is often limited. And the limitation of our perception causes the challenges for us in life. You know, that's the idea. If we were all knowing, life might be a little bit more simple to understand, or it might be more complex. Well, but, the, the point is that, uh, you know, we're talking this way and it, it, it looks easy. Yeah. But the main point, and that's why having kids has been, you know, the main, the main, the main event in my life. Mm. Because it's about who I think I am is that... Would I really think I am that I am? I mean, I don't want to really be completely... No, 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 I, I like it, though. But, but the point is that, you know, if we are talking... Also in the ex expression, when I express myself, uh, today I have a distinction when I express myself and when something that is around me expressed through me, that's different. Mm. that's different because yeah. there is a possibility at least the one that I'm interested in that, that I as an actor as a body yeah. I can propose myself to be like a window through which mm -hmm. whoever is looking at me is gonna see through me Yes, and not just a target like you know I'm good I'm bad I'm nice, I'm ugly, I'm this, I'm that. It's a completely different vision that it's, it's not about me anymore. It's not about no. me. It's about the vision of life. And, and, and look at this. Like, I studied, like, the Greek poets, you know, and all of, the, like, Aristophanes, and, you know, you, you read some of those plays. There were hundreds of actors who portrayed those. They were conduits for this beautiful story. Yeah. And there's still people that are coming through. And we as actors are given that play in and of itself is not alive, but it has an essence. And the mm -hmm. beauty of an actor is you're allowed, you're able to help bring that, that essence to life. Yeah. And to give that story wings. Because, you know, I'm not saying the actor's not important the story lasts forever. You know, Aristophanes, the birds was done in ancient Greece. People are still doing that play now. I watched it, you know, when I was in college. But um, without the actors, it doesn't come alive. No. And there's this beautiful thing where actors give this message a home. And the truly great actors, you know, I'm, my I, my favorite is Daniel Day-Lewis. I'm a huge Daniel Day-Lewis fan. Gangs of New York and There Will Be Blood. Just anything he's in is amazing. He's a window. I watched an interview with him and I was like, who who is this guy? You know what I mean? Because he was nothing like any of his characters. The characters were just so... Um, 
it was like a window and something was shining through this 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 other this other character this other frame was the shining through and that's such a beautiful i've never heard someone use that analogy for acting but that's i think the greatest acting is that yeah i think so too and and uh, it's still to come i think because you know until now we have a lot of amazing actors who are amazing but the the quality that i'm talking about is the quality that it's happening in your absence mm. <laughs> you know what i mean totally. it's when you disappear as an eye as a i'm talking but when you disappear as as that kind of uh, belief that you have and things start to go through you Mm-hmm. And then you know there is the 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 expression is not anymore about you, but it's about the plurality. Yeah. You know, it's about we. Yep. It's about I'm in my room, and I have different stuff around me, and I place the computer over there. I have the light. So it's it's not just me. Mm-hmm. It doesn't exist to me. To be myself implies to be somewhere. To be part of something else, yeah. You know, it's a vision. There is a vision. It's not about yeah. a, a technique. There is no technique. Actually, the great acting is when there is no acting. Yeah, <laughs> it becomes real. It lives <laughs> yeah. it. You know, and that's the thing that I think that people don't always understand too is that. You hear about some of the great performances and the people lived the role. They weren't acting. They were that character. They were this space, you know, like Heath Ledger, when he became the Joker, Mm -hmm. like, you know, he was that character, you know, and I think that you, you go to so many of these Oscar performances and those people are able to, one of the greatest dangerous i think for an actor is the ego it's the it's that part of themselves that is the me 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 because it's not true it's not real the ego is this false sense of self and that's what you know the we we build up this idea of who we are like and this is something that I, i find interesting one day i was on set and i played a doctor Dr. Smith and uh, I was you know treating this one person and uh, on the show and everyone in production that day called me Dr. Smith they didn't call me Sean they were like hey, Dr. Smith can you use doctor hey doctor you know and it was like <laughs> and even the people that I was on set with were giving me this deferring to me the way they would a doctor and the idea was is that we 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 provide ourselves, and I always am, I I crack up, I don't think all the people I'm interviewing understand why I'm laughing anytime I ask, who are you and what do you do? Because I'm trying to put them in a box. And so, and, and it's necessary for what I'm doing in these interviews. But the reality is, is it's not true. You know, I'm Sean Trace, but that, that's, that's also a name that is not even real. You know what I mean? Yeah. At the end of the day, I just am. I am. And, and the, the essence of the actor is that you can see that this is the preconceived ideas of yourself are not real as well. You know, you know, I could be a doctor. I could be a lawyer. I could be a beggar. I could be a slave. I could be anything. Like the idea is that anything is inherent to yeah. our position. You know, if you were born, and, and I think that the best example of that is how, how can I connect that with reality is if you were born in a different time, you know, mm-hmm. who's to say that you'd look the way you look now or talk the way you yeah. talk now or be the way you are now, yeah. you know? We are, we create this construct of, of, this, of the idea of self. And I love the idea of a great acting is to just have a window where you get the self out of the way. Yeah, well, it's it's not 
it's not to have a window it's to be like a window. to be a window to be yeah. an empty frame where yes. you know to look at me but actually you are gonna see through me and, because, and, and, and i'm gonna i'm gonna say that like the person i'm talking to here is not the same person that i watched in that film oh yeah that's <laughs> true you know what I mean? I, that, was, that was that was interesting. I, I I when I watched the film, I had this idea of who you might be, and I was like kind of trying to prepare for this interview with referencing the character that you played in that film, and you're not him. But you know what I mean? That's the point. You know, there is there is uh, an amazing, extraordinary woman, uh, Byron Katie. I don't know if you ever heard. Byron Katie, I, I'll have to look her up. You have to, really. Because she she's, she's not a spiritual teacher, but she had um, a wake up something. Like one day she was, uh, she was really depressed and, and, and really in bad condition. And one day she just had this uh, gap. That she was looking at things in the morning and before the 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 claiming that who is seeing it's me, before that claiming, she saw the game. That, that's what she says, you know? And she's amazing because she really says that, you know, uh, we, we, think, we think we see other people, but we don't, actually. We mm -hmm. project our stuff on other people. Yes. Yes, and really check them, check her out because she's amazing. And I will it really, really. That, cool. That's a very profound thing. Like we rarely we act interact with the real person. Exactly. We inter we interact with our judgments of that person. Exactly. With our <laughs> our interpretation. Go ahead. No, because this this puts together the acting and the, the, the vision that we are talking about. Yep. For example, to be authentic, for me as an actor, to be authentic, I start not as a technique, but I start to see my own inauthenticity. That mm -hmm. moment where I strip out my falsity because I'm... You know, I'm not talking to you. I'm projecting something. If I am aware of that, boom, presence happened. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is clear, John, but what I want to say is that because many people say, okay, I do something to be authentic. Well, yeah. that's because <laughs> who, is going, real. who is going to be authentic? It's yeah. the the same guy that it's you know the same ego. Yeah, 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 yeah. Authenticity happens when the ego is stripped out. Mm -hmm. You know, is uncovered. And when yeah. it's uncovered, well, each moment, my kids they are teaching me each moment. Yeah. You know, because I I love them, but I want do this, do that. Yep. I mean, really, I can I can tell you so many experience in the morning, you know, because he's the boy wakes up six o'clock in the morning and I don't want to. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> My daughter rolls over and she's like, Daddy, Daddy. I was like, give me five more minutes. <laughs> but uh, let, me, let me tell you, it was one morning. It was such an amazing experience because... I woke up and I was so, I think you can imagine how I was, you know, like six o'clock in the morning and then I went to sleep like two o'clock in the morning. So four hours just to sleep. Yeah. And I said, oh no, oh no, oh no. But while I was complaining inside my head, I said, wait a moment, I'm here anyway. And I start to see the beauty of the morning I start to see the smell that in the morning is different. Mm -hmm. I start to see, I'm in Germany. Uh, I don't like so much Germany, but I'm here because my wife is uh, half Persian, half German. She's amazing. 
mm -hmm. and and I'm here. Well, even the gray of the sky that morning, it was so particular, it was so interesting. And I start to see the difference that when I stop wanting to have what I want, I'm available to see what it is. Mm. I understand that. There are a few moments in my life where I felt so centered that I think that I knew my entire life. It was hard to explain. There was one moment where I just felt like I needed to be somewhere. Let me tell a story about my wife. I, I told my wife, I, I, I studied intuitive development. I studied intuition training, you know, so I would spend time in meditation and just center and, and, you know, see what I could see in my mind. Mm -hmm. And, um, one day I told my wife, she's like, can you tell me, I don't know what my purpose is. I'm trying to figure it out. And I was like, I don't know about that for myself. <laughs> but I'll see what I see. And I saw, saw her standing in front of the Virgin Mary, praying. And I said, I don't know what this means, but this is what I see in my head. And I said, well, there's the center of this city of Saigon. There's a large statue of Mary. It's the city center. It's really the heart of the city in front of the Vietnamese, uh, uh, Saigonese uh, Notre Dame Cathedral. A very smaller version of the French one yeah. modeled after and um, so I told her this, three months go by and we didn't get a chance to go there. And then finally one night I said, we go tonight. We go tonight. And she's like, okay, I'm feeling it. And we go there and we pull over to pray. And she walks up and she's standing looking up and she looks over next to her and the most famous singer in the history of Vietnamese history is standing next to her. My wife has never met this lady before. And she looks over and she's like, your gun lay, you are the most iconic singer. This is amazing. I, I just want to say, I'm a huge fan of yours. Mm -hmm. I, I really, really wanted to let you know that. And the lady looked at my wife and she says, I'm a fan of yours. I love your voice and I love what you do. You inspire me. I hope that you can keep inspiring people. And there, at that moment, it was probably one of the most spiritual moments of my wife's life where kind of everything made sense for her. Not to say she hasn't had difficult days after that. There have been mm -hmm. many difficult days. But in that moment, it made sense. And it was just this, this beautiful aha moment that the universe said, be here at this moment and pay attention. And, you know, and that other lady had to pay attention to go at that moment. She had to be feeling that call. But I really feel that one of the biggest lies that we believe is that we are in some way separate from other people. We are some way in separate from all of the things surrounding us instead of connected to some greater power force that flows through everything. Yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what yeah, does. The, 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 the thing is that, you know, it's difficult to talk about these things because it's <laughs> an experience because who, yes, it, it, you can't talk about you it. You can talk because who, who is listening to this is here and you say, yeah. And, yes. and so, and what? Yes. <laughs> Yes, and I understand. I understand. So, so it should be an experience. But actually, this kind of experience, if you if you remember, it's in the documentary that I say. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, only when something, say, uh, an accident, you know, illness, something bad, or somebody in your life, in your family, die, or a catastrophe, then boom, there is a crack in the mind and in that moment there's a possibility something stops yes and whatever is is being always present there that moment is available exactly 
And creativity starts there. Yeah. It's just one, one more thing to put no, everything please, together. Please, please. There is a, a Sandy Meisner that I'm sure you know, this yeah, yeah, yeah. acting teacher. He said something that, that I really like so much when, when, when they asked him, what is acting? He said, well, it's to answer truthfully to an imaginary situation. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what happens in our life daily. Yes. You know, we are acting. All the we time. Are, all the time. All the time. Every single moment, we are a character playing a role and we don't realize it. That's, that's what I'm saying. So, instead, for me, acting is instead of getting a technique, it's about self inquiry So, that's the whole point with me. If you want to know acting, what is acting for me is self inquiry Get to know yourself. Yeah. Get to know how you create an experience of what is real. But when, when you get clear about that, then you can, you know, you can play like my kids, you know, they play something like this and they do. Yep. <laughs> well, and I think, and I think it takes bravery and it takes honesty, you know, like. It takes honesty, yeah. Because like people, when we put ourselves in that box, we, we tell ourselves, I would never do that. That's not me. That's not how I behave. But like the, the power of acting is to realize that all of us are the same. You know, like, so say your character is a drug addict who's stealing something, you know, so that they can support a habit or doing something like that. And people go, oh, that's not who I am. It could be. It could be. Any one of us has the same roots of insecurity, has the same potential yeah. for vice, the same potential for for po positivity, for good things. It just takes courage to look at that. And, and one of the things I love about acting is, again, you portray a character which allows people to experience empathy. Mm -hmm. And empathy is one of the most powerful things that we can share with one another because it helps break down those walls of, of separation, of who we are. Yeah. Now, what what... What's a dream of yours that you would love to, 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 to see realized in regards to, to your creative life? But, and again, if you, if you would have asked me this question 10 years ago, I would have said something like, oh, I would like to dream to do this and to do that. But today it's real difficult to, to answer this question for me because um, Like I said, what's happening in my life now, I'm 58, is that I am start to be more interested in what it is and less and less and less in what I want, in what I dream, in what I wish. I like that. I don't know if it makes sense, but... <laughs> it's, well, it's, no, it does. It's the idea of... We all grow up with these dreams. I want to accomplish this. I want to do this. I want to be able to, you know, achieve this. But there's a certain freedom in saying, those goals might not define me because I might not achieve any of them. You know, like for the actor, I want to win an Oscar. Well, what happens if you never do? Can you enjoy just the experiences that you've had? Yeah. You know, and it's like, Imagine you get in a car and you're going to drive to some beautiful location. Well, what happens if you never get there? What happens if halfway along the drive, you decide to make a turn to a different place? Can you still enjoy this yeah. new place? Exactly. You know? That's exactly what, I, what I'm saying. You know, it, it's like an, it's happening almost each day for me. Like, you know, um, a few days ago, I went to you know, running. Uh, not here in, in the south of uh, Germany and uh, and I, I had the workshop in the afternoon uh, but I got lost I got lost in the forest so at the moment that I realized I got lost I had just a fraction of a second I said oh my gosh I should be back <laughs> then I said wait a moment 
again, and I sat in, in that beauty. <laughs> oh my gosh, and I went back later uh, and I start workshop with this experience. I said, you know what, that's acting. Stop pretending to do what you should do and be where you are. I agree. <laughs> and I think so often, like for actors, they get so stuck in their head. And people, oh, you got to focus on your self taping, you got to do this, you got to do this, you have to remember these techniques. And people get so in their heads that they forget they are a human being who knows instinctively how to be themselves. And I'm not saying don't train, I'm saying do train. But at the same time, don't forget just your innate you -ness, you know, you know, because we are, we are ourselves and that's special, you know, and that's what like Meisner said, you know, it's that you are in an imaginary situation, but you have to be truthful, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is, I, I really am so fascinated with that. I mean, it, it happened to me uh, two days ago. I went to the doctor for uh, an X-ray here in Germany. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, COVID, you, you have to, you need to wear a mask. Mask, uh, yeah. You have to keep the distance. And then I was in the outside of the waiting room, standing, waiting. And there was uh, an old man with a mask and he looked at me and he said, uh, pointing me to go in the waiting room. Mm. So I, I was like, okay, I'm going to answer now. I'm going to say, what the fuck you want? <laughs> you know? And I said, Pasquale, calm down, go in the waiting room. Okay. I went in the waiting room. But then I was, in my mind, lots of, you know, I, I was saying, okay, you know what, now I'm going to go to the reception, I'm going to ask, listen, if I wear the mask, and if I keep two meters of distance, can I be standing on my feet or I have to sit on a chair? I said, okay, but while I was thinking, they called me Esposito, so they gave me the results, and I left. I went downstairs. I said, you know what, I'm gonna wait for that man because I wanna understand why. Because in Germany mm. they are like this. Mm. <laughs> you know, I wanna understand why he has to point in me, why he has to tell me what I have to do. Why? Mm. I was a little, you know, reactive, but still, I said, I wanna understand. I just, I yeah, wanna I ask him. So I waited for the man, he came out. I said, excuse me, sir, can you speak English? Because uh, I'm in German, but I don't speak German. But, so everybody speaks English very well in German. So the, the man very nicely, he stopped and said, yes, sure, tell me. I said, please, sir, you remember I was upstairs and you pointing me to go in the waiting room? Yeah, yeah. But, but why? What is the problem? And he said, oh, I'm sorry, I just want to tell you that you can go inside and you can see it. It wasn't what you perceived. Sean, I, I was crying a little. Yeah. We, we create monsters in our head that are far worse than anything that we might have. And we us. answer, we behave based on that. And that's what you were saying. The person that you're interacting with is hardly ever the real person. Absolutely. I, I, and I'm telling you, only in that moment, I so in fact, if you ask me, Pasquale, what is the thing that you remember the most? Well, Sean, I have to be careful because I'm going to cry now. I remember the eyebrow of that man, blue eyes. It was so sweet. It was about 80 years old. And the sweetness, the softness, the kindness of that man touched so deeply my heart that I felt, you know, I felt like a Don Quixote that he's fighting, you know, against these windmills. Yeah, right. 
I think that uh, every time I finish up one of these podcasts, I will listen to the beginning, kind of think about what the theme is. What is the theme that was today? I have to today. Today is definitely Zen and the art of acting. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate your time. I want to say thank you for coming on today. Thank you to you. Like I said, you inspire me more than can you right. So I have to If say you need you. any help starting your podcast, man, let me know. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, than, you. yeah. I'll call you. I'd man. love to help and consult, man. I'll call you. But thank you so much. Do yeah, you have anything yeah, yeah. last that you would like to tell everyone today before we finish up? Oh, uh, no, really. I mean, I think we, we said a lot. We, we got through a lot. <laughs> yeah. well, I appreciate it. Well, thank you for tuning in, and we'll catch up with everyone yeah. next time.